Are you an Xbox gamer who would really like to start up a Twitch channel but just can't afford a capture card? Oh my gosh, those things are expensive. 90 squids is a lot. Hi guys, I'm Salty and I'm here to help new streamers level up their content. Anyone who knows me knows that I started streaming on Mixer straight from Xbox, but did you guys know that there are actually two ways to stream to Twitch from Xbox without ever owning a capture card? To start with guys, you will need to install the Twitch app on your Xbox, then you need to log into that and then jump over to where it says broadcast right at the top. You can add a title for your stream just here, but the game will automatically populate based on what you have launched on your Xbox. To use a web Webcam, you just need to plug in any USB webcam straight into the port in your Xbox and you can then select the camera position. We're going to select bottom left for now. So microphone will pick up whatever microphone you have plugged in to your controller. Let's plug in the PewDiePie Good headset. Pack. If you're looking for a decent headset, by the way, guys, I will leave a link down below to this headset in the description. A really common new streamer mistake is actually having the game louder than the microphone. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to reduce down the game volume ever so slightly. I think 60% should be about right. If you are using a party chat as well, you can unmute that here. People who are in your party will be asked whether or not they want to include audio when you are live. Now, bitrate is dependent on your personal internet speed. And the absolute best tip I have for console streamers is to use an ethernet cable. If you can't use an ethernet cable because you live in the attic and your router is in the basement or something, there's something that you can buy called a TP link. And I will leave a link down below to this in the description. But what you do is you plug that in next to your router and it uses the wires in your house to produce a much more stable signal than Wi-Fi. So how do we choose our bit rate? So the first thing that we need to do is test our internet speed and we want to do this on our xbox because that's where we're broadcasting from so let's go and open up microsoft edge for the first time in your life right <laughs> then in the top bar we're just going to search for speed test now it doesn't really matter which site you use for this that's the first hit so we'll just click on that one now and then we want to begin our test so we're not really concerned here about download at all because we're not going to be downloading we're actually going to be uploading our content to twitch so the number that we care about is the upload upload speed. You can see here that my upload speed is around 36 megabytes per second. Now we're going to use the OBS NVENC guide which we've got on the screen now as well as the official Twitch bitrate guide to give us an idea of what bitrate we should be using for our internet speed. I am going to leave a link to both of these guides down below guys. As you can see here Twitch recommends a bitrate of no more than 6000. So technically that means we could stream to Twitch with a bitrate of 6000 and a resolution of 1920 times 1080. However there's something you should know about Twitch transcoding. As an affiliate you are not guaranteed transcoding. You may get it you may not and if you're not affiliate the chances of you getting it are even lower. If you don't get Twitch transcoding what that means is that this option right here to reduce your stream quality down does not exist. I accidentally recorded that section with the stream volume on <laughs> so now we're re-recording it. When you're a brand new streamer, you really don't want to be excluding anybody from your stream, right? You want to be including even that guy who's watching on a mobile phone in McDonald's. The safest bet is to output at 720. It's not too low of a resolution, but it's not too high. That means that your stream isn't going to be constantly buffering for some people. Now, Twitch suggests a 4,500 bit rate for a stream of 720. So since we have the upload speed to allow for that bit rate, that's the bit rate that we are going to go for. Now, I do hear you guys asking, why don't you use auto? And the thing to remember is that Twitch transcoding has a built-in auto setting. So if you do happen to get the transcoding for that day, what that means is that there's going to be two different things automatically adjusting the quality of your stream, which isn't really going to look great. So now that we have everything set up over on our Xbox to stream to Twitch, all that we need to do is go onto our mobile phone and open up the Twitch app so that we can see our chat. So when you want to start streaming, all that you need 
need to do is jump down into where it says start streaming down at the bottom and you can see now on the bottom right hand side that it's showing us how long we have been live for and how many viewers that we've got unfortunately it doesn't show you chat on screen which is where we've got our mobile phone to so let's take a look at our stream over on twitch so we can see now that we've got this weird brb screen going on and the reason for that is that we've not actually launched a game so if we launch any old game here then that should show us over on twitch oh my god that camera angle <laughs> Once you've done streaming, you just need to jump back into the Twitch app and then hit stop streaming. My hair has now gone flat because I've got own that headset. <laughs> if you would like to level up your straight from Xbox stream, you can use a service like Lightstream. And what Lightstream does is it pushes your stream through the Lightstream service and then it lets you add things like overlays and widgets and alerts. The only thing about Lightstream to mention is it is not free. There are different pricing plans depending on what quality you want to upload to Twitch. If you are a brand new streamer, I would recommend just going with the minimum plan for now as that will let you upload to Twitch at 720, 30 frames a second. I did actually make a video on Lightstream a really, really long time ago. But if you would like me to make a brand new 2020 Lightstream to Twitch tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. Hello. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure that you're here for the video that you recommended me to make. So there is another way to stream to Twitch from Xbox without a capture card and also get all of your overlays and alerts and widgets and all of that beautiful stuff that you can do inside of OBS. But you are going to need a computer for this one. Now, because you're not streaming a game from the computer, you can really pretty much stream from any laptop. Now that's a big sentence. As long as your computer computer isn't a literal toaster, you can stream from it. The software that I recommend using for live streaming in general is OBS. Now OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Software. But there are other streaming applications like XSplit, or Streamlabs OBS. But both of these are freemium. And what freemium means is that there's a bunch of stuff that's free, which is great. But then there's a bunch of stuff that's locked behind paywalls. Whereas OBS is completely free. I will leave a link down below to OBS just in case you don't already have that installed. After downloading OBS, just make sure that you are logged into your Xbox. Now for this to work the best, you will need two displays on your PC or laptop. So if you're using a laptop, laptop and your TV, what I'd recommend doing is unplugging the TV from the Xbox and instead plugging that into the laptop. Now, initially, you're not going to be able to see your Xbox, but just bear with me. We're going to get there. Next, just make sure that you have the Xbox companion console installed on your PC. Make sure that you're logged into it with your Xbox account. We'll leave a link to this down below. Although the Xbox companion console is, as far as I'm aware, included within Windows, I'm pretty sure mine was already installed. I had to move my camera because it was in the way of what we were supposed to show. So once you have that downloaded and logged in, just jump over to where it says connections. Then what you need to do is add your Xbox. So if it's on the same network as your PC, it should just automatically show up in this list. Now, if it does not show up in this list, just make sure that the Xbox companion console app on your PC and your Xbox are both up to date because that can stop it connecting. What we need to do now is just hit stream. So what this is going to do is this is going to mirror your Xbox onto your PC. And there is actually very little delay, which is what's super cool about this. And the quality is pretty sharp, guys. So now that we've managed to get the game onto our PC, we just need to add a scene into OBS to capture that game. A little bit of soulception here. We're actually already in a scene here. So all that we need to do is capture the game. So there's two different ways you can do this and it depends on how many monitors you have. So say you only have one monitor, the way that you would do this is with a game capture. So I'm just going to call it Xbox G, I'm going to hit OK and then we want to select a specific window and then we want to select the Xbox app. Oh, it stopped streaming. <laughs> there we go. The caveat with this is that if I'm not clicked onto this, it can either disappear or which is why I do recommend using a display instead of a game capture. The sound for the game will actually come through your default sound device 
So to add in a default sound device into all scenes in OBS, we just jump into settings and then into audio and then under where it says desktop audio, we just want to set this to default and hit apply. So you can see now that we've got a new audio track here, which is our desktop audio. A little OBS trick for you here. If you don't want your audio across every single scene, say you have a starting soon scene and you don't want that audio in there, what you can do instead of adding a default audio device, you can set your desktop audio to disabled. So now you've got no desktop audio anywhere. And then you add a audio output capture. And on that one, you just want to select your default audio device. Now you need to add this in every single scene where you want your game audio and desktop audio to come through. So now we've got our game, our game audio. We just need to add in our microphone. So you can see in the bottom, I've already got my microphone in here. I'll just show you briefly how you add that one in. I'm not going to add it in because we'll get double sound. Uh, so you just need to add a audio input capture there and then select new. And then you just want to select your audio device. So it's going to have the name of either your headset or your USB microphone. Then you just need to add in your webcam. And you do that just by adding in a video capture device there and then you just select your device here so now we need to talk a little bit about output settings to twitch and we've already talked a bit about bit rates so i'm not going to kind of go into a big rant about bit rates but i'm going to show you some basic settings for obs for outputting your stream to twitch so if we just jump into settings the first thing that we're going to need to look at is our video so our base canvas resolution size is 1920 times 1080 Did i then scale down my resolution to 1280 by 720 and that again is so that my stream doesn't buffer for people if i don't get the encoding on that day then under output i am in advanced at the moment because i'm recording and so i cannot change that so the most important thing in this section is the encoder there are two different ways that you can encode when you stream the first way is the way that i'm showing you here which is through nvidia nvenc h264 new and so what that means is we are encoding through our gpu so that's through our graphics card now in order to encode this way you are going to need a dedicated graphics card now if you're kind of new to streaming this is something that you may not have the reason why a lot of people encode through gpu is because it helps them to balance their pc better especially if they're streaming pc games if you're streaming Xbox games, which you will be if you're watching this video, there is absolutely no reason why you can't encode in the other way, which is through Software X264. And that is where you encode through your CPU, which is your central processing unit. And everyone's going to have a CPU. Some PCs might not have a GPU, but PCs that work will all have a CPU. Now, I would recommend that you view this section in Simple. Simple gives you a lot less options and it's going to be a lot less overwhelming. When you set this to simple, pretty much the only thing that you're going to be needing to adjust is your bit rate. We've already talked about bit rates. You just need to make sure that your bit rate is right for your upload speed. And it's also right for your audience who may or may not be on McDonald's Wi-Fi. If you are lucky enough to have a PC with a graphics card, one thing that I would note here if you're using NVENC is you just want to make sure that your bitrate is not dropping below or much below 4.5k. Now the reason for this is that the stream can go a little bit blocky if you are dropping below that. So the only thing left to do now is to add any overlays or cam borders or alerts or any other cool stuff that you can put into obs and then hit the stream button and go i hope that you guys found this video useful if you did don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss out on new ways to level up your content if you guys do have any questions about streaming i do stream over on twitch every friday saturday and sunday link in the description below if you're new to streaming i really want to hear from you so please let me know who you are and comments below i'm even giving you guys permission to drop your twitch links today if you are new to streaming and you're wondering where you can get free resources for your stream i did make a video on that one you can check that out over here i'll see you over there guys bye